Hello everyone, welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn three different ways to implement a debouncer in Flutter. If you don't know what a debouncer is, let me explain. A debouncer is a programming technique used to limit the frequency of function execution, ensuring that a function is only called once after a specified delay following a rapid series of inputs, like key presses or button clicks. It helps prevent unnecessary or redundant operations by waiting until the input activity has settled. So let's start. Let's look at the dependencies first. We have only Cupertino icons and Easy Debouncer package added as dependency. We will be implementing Debouncer in three different ways, one of which is using the Easy Debouncer package. To start with, let's create three folders in the lib directory. First simple underscore debouncer, second notifier underscore debouncer, and third easy underscore debouncer. In simple debouncer, we will be implementing debouncer using simple timer class. In notifier debouncer, we will implement using the value notifier class. In easy debouncer, we implement using the easy debouncer package. Create a class inside the simple underscore debouncer folder named simple underscore debouncer dot dart and build a simple UI with a text field that has a basic decoration and hint text search. We will give it the title, Simple Debouncer. Then, add the onChange callback to the text field to listen for input changes. Now let's make this class the home screen of the app by navigating to main.dart and changing the home property in the root material widget. Next create a new class named Debouncer. Let's implement a simple debouncer. Create a simple constructor to accept the delay in milliseconds. Then declare a callback to be called when debouncer executes. We call it action here. Then another variable of type timer, underscore timer. Next write a function named run, which will accept a callback function as parameter. Inside the run function, check if the timer is null, if it is not null, then cancel it and create a new instance of timer with provided milliseconds. So this timer will be finished only when the specified milliseconds are passed and at the end it will execute the action. That means if the run function is called within the time provided, the timer will be canceled and a new instance will be created and the action will not be called until it finishes. Now that our debouncer is complete, let's see it in action in a real example. Let's create an instance of the debouncer class we just created and add a delay of 300 milliseconds. Next, we'll write a function called onSearchChanged that accepts a string query from the input field we added to the UI. Inside this function, we'll call the debouncer.run method and pass in the action function. Attach onSearchChanged to the onChanged callback of the input field. Now, let's refresh the app and see how it works. As we start typing in the UI, you'll notice in the console that the print statement is only triggered and the delay between the characters typed is 300 milliseconds. This means that if the user types too quickly, with less than 300 milliseconds between each character, the debouncer will not trigger the action. In a real-world scenario, this action might be an API call, and you would want to avoid overloading the server during a search or while performing similar functionalities. You will see the difference if we change the delay to 2 seconds. Great! Now let's get to the Notifier Debouncer implementation. So similar to the first one, let's create a Debouncer class Search Query Notifier and a UI class Notify Debouncer. Let's copy the UI from the first implementation and then set this UI class as home in the main.dart. Now let's create the class for the debouncer, name it search query notifier and extend value notifier and set type as string. Because, in this demo we are just using a string query parameter for this notifier. Now let's copy some code from the previous debouncer. We need the timer and the run method. 
Then rename the run method to setQuery and pass parameter as string. On callback method of the timer, set the value equals query. That's how we set the value of this value notifier class. Next, we will implement this class, so create an instance of the debouncer in the notifier debouncer class. Final debouncer equals search query notifier. Then call debouncer.setQuery in the onChange callback of the input. Now to listen to when the debouncer fires, add the callback in the init state like debouncer.addListener and get the value using debouncer.value. To see when the value is actually set, let's add a value listenable builder in the UI and set the value in a text widget. Also update the screen title to value notifier debouncer. Now that our implementation is complete, let's refresh the UI and see how it works. So if you remember our previous implementation, you can see that the UI is behaving exactly similar. If we change the delay to 2 seconds, then also you can see that the debouncer fires only when the user types and waits for 2 seconds. Excellent, now let's see how we can implement the same functionality using the easy debounce package. Let's create a widget and copy the UI from previous implementations. Then rename the title to Easy Debouncer. Make sure you have added the Easy Debouncer package in the pubspec YAML file. Declare a string query and set it to empty. Let's check out the package homepage in the pub.dev and see how to implement it. We can see that to initialize we need to give an ID for the debouncer and to cancel we can call cancel with the same ID or use cancel all to cancel all debouncers. Now let's set the query to the value from the input in the onChange callback. Next call easydebounce.debounce with an ID, here we will set it as search debouncer with a delay of 300 milliseconds. And on the onDispose callback of the widget, call easydebounce.cancel with the ID to cancel the debouncer. Let's check how it works. Looks like working good. Let me add a text widget and display the search value. Let's check the UI again. Let me update the delay to 2 seconds and see the difference. Also let me do a quick cleanup by extracting the debouncer code to a different function. Cool, that's it. So we implemented the debouncer functionality in three different ways, one using simple timer, second using a notifier class and third using the easy debounce package. Hope this quick tutorial on implementing debouncer in different ways is helpful to you. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The link to source code for this tutorial is in the description. Please leave your valuable comments below this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.